Hello students, today we are going to discuss some of the methods used in the estimation of the volume of the body fluid compartments. Let's start with the common principle behind it. It's called dilution principle or indicator dilution principle. Here we are going to inject a known quantity of the substance, a indicator or a dye into this unknown compartment. That is the volume of the compartment which we want to measure. We are going to inject a known quantity of dye and we are going to take a sample from this after equilibrium to find out the final concentration achieved in this compartment. By using these values, we are going to calculate the volume of this compartment B. Let's see this with an example. So here we are injected a known quantity of substance in the compartment B. Let's say we have injected 10 ml of the dye which had the original concentration of 1 milligram per ml. The total amount we are injecting is 10 milligram of the dye. So there's a total amount injected. Now this Compartment B also we can write the same thing. We can measure the final concentration in B. Let's say we have got it as 0.1 milligram per ml and we don't know the volume of this compartment. The indicator amount B is actually equal to indicator amount A because the dye has not gone anywhere. It is staying within this compartment only. So the total 10 milligram remains within this compartment B. If we rewrite this, we don't know only this volume B. So volume B is equal to the total amount injected that is 10 milligram divided by the final concentration achieved that is 0.1 milligram per ml. So the volume is going to be 100 ml. So this is the volume of this compartment. So this is the broad principle which we are going to use for measuring all the compartment volumes. Um, only thing we have to be sure is that the characteristics of the dye which we are choosing should stay only in the compartment we intend to measure. If you want to measure the extracellular fluid volume, then the dye we inject should stay only in the extracellular fluid and should not enter the cell. And it should disperse evenly within the compartment. It should not stay within, for example, it should not stay more in the interstitial fluid and less in the plasma within ECF. Then we are going to have a wrong value. It should not have any effects on its own on the distribution of fluids and it should not be metabolized or excreted during the period in which we are estimating. We may not get a dye which absolutely satisfies all these criteria. So sometimes if some known amount of dye is getting excreted, we might have to do correction for that in our calculations. Let's start with plasma. Here we use a dye called Evans Blue because Evans Blue is tightly bound to albumin. Once injected into this compartment, it stays only within the plasma. So when we take a final concentration, it gives the estimate of plasma volume. The other substance used is the iodine labeled albumin. Sodium bromide. Here it has an isotope of bromine, radioactive isotope 82 bromine. Once the bromine is injected into the plasma, it goes actually into the interstitial fluid also. So the entire extracellular fluid compartment is filled with bromine. So if we take a final value from this compartment, it's going to estimate extracellular fluid volume. We inject about 3% of sodium bromide solution slowly and we measure the final concentration after 4 hours. And some amount of bromine also escaped into the intracellular fluid and we have to make correction for that. These are the other substances used in the measurement of extracellular fluid volume. Deuterium oxide, it is an isotope of hydrogen. When it is present along with oxygen, we call it as heavy water. And when this is injected, it behaves like water only. So it goes into all the compartments. So everywhere, all three compartments, it equally distributes. So we inject around 0.1 per kg of body weight. We measure the final concentration using either breath or in the urine sample, we can measure hydrogen to deuterium ratio and we can calculate the whole body sample. And deuterium is not uh, radioactive, so it is safe to use in smaller quantities. And the other isotope of hydrogen is the uh, tritiated water, which is actually radioactive and it is not safe. It was once used to calculate the volume of total body water. The other substance is antipyrin for total body water estimation. Total body potassium. This is different from other estimation so far we have seen because we don't have to inject anything this is naturally present in the body this is radioactive isotope of potassium and we are going to use a whole body counter to quantify the emissions from this potassium 
total cell mass, intracellular fluid volume or the certain things we can calculate using the total body potassium estimation. So the next method we are going to see is the bioimpedance analysis. This is a non-invasive procedure. Here we are going to inject current at two different points in the body, a known quantity of current and we are going to measure how much is the current flows across. So effectively we are going to measure the resistance or the impedance for the flow of current. And after measuring this resistance, R50 stands for measuring at 50 Hz. We are going to use prediction formula like this to calculate the volume of the body fluids. And there are many methods, this is getting developed every day, like uh, the single frequency uh, bioimpedance analysis, there is multi frequency bioimpedance analysis, bioimpedance spectroscopy. This is also uh, giving better predictions of body fluid compartments. So, this is clinically more preferred because it's non invasive and very simple to use. And there are other methods like dual energy X ray absorptiometry, which is also called as the DEXA scan. Here, two rays of X ray with the different energies are going to be used and the differential absorption is going to be studied to measure the body fluids. And this is another technique, magnetic resonance spectroscopy. This is also used to identify the body composition. We don't have to measure all the compartments. For example, if we can measure the total body water and ECF volume, we can indirectly estimate, indirectly calculate the ICF volume also. Similarly, interstitial volume, there cannot be any dye actually because whatever we inject it will include plasma also so we use extracellular fluid volume and the plasma volume subtracting this we calculate the interstitial fluid volume and total blood volume can be also be calculated by using the plasma volume divided by 1 minus hematocrit hematocrit is the total volume of all the cellular component in the blood so this is a question for you guys Try to solve this and write the answer in the comments. Thank you.